Hey, what's up, you guys? And of course, welcome, 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 welcome to another alternative factuals video. So this video is going to be a little different or a lot different compared to what we usually would discuss in terms of this channel. I usually like to get into character developments, plots and things like that. But um, there's a show that I think everybody has become very comfortable with and have come to my channel and based on, you know, the content that I put out in regards to this show and it's been very popular but um i kind of want to address some information that's out there and some expectations you might have regarding this show in terms of if there will be a season three or not but you know before we got get into any details or anything of that nature please be sure to like share and of course subscribe i'll leave your comments down below the whole point of this channel is to get your opinion so leave your opinions your comments your thoughts down in the comments down below and without further ado let's kind of jump right into this all right so i'm pretty sure if you're watching this video you are already watched Cloak and Dagger for the most part. You've seen the first season, which um, notoriously it did a lot better compared to the second season. And um, a lot of people have been wondering, is there going to be a season three? There hasn't really been an announcement for Cloak and Dagger, as well as it, there has been speculation that they might cross over at least for an episode of two into uh, the whole Marvel Universe on Hulu with the uh, Runaways. So, and that's to be a little bit expected because in the early runs of the Runaways, you know, Cloak and Dagger did cross over prospectively with this group, as well as, you know, the villains that existed in the Runaway universe. But before I dive into any of that, um, so for the most part, the first season did pretty well of Cloak and Dagger. Um, in my opinion, it wasn't perfect. It wasn't bad, but it wasn't perfect. Like, they spent a lot of time focusing on characters and building up the characters that we know today. But in a lot of ways, there was a lot of things wrong in terms of the pacing and uh, wasn't really too much action. You know, it just was mostly just emotional emotional things which does not necessarily make it a bad show but for the type of show that it is which is a superhero show at the end of the day there wasn't enough action a lot more emotional ties and dramas and stuff like that and it just was kind of dragging for a while but season one did well simply because a lot of people were hoping that it would kind of turn into that type of superhero flick okay so then we dive into like the second season and this is where things get a little tricky the second season of marvel's cloak and dagger um according to what's online and remember this is public information so you're allowed to look this up and you know if i've made some mistakes or if i just somehow messed it up you know you're welcome to correct me in the comments but they said it averaged a 0 0.12 ratio in the 18 through 49 demographic with 355,000 viewers and this is the second season of marvel's cloak and dagger now compared to season one um if you've seen the information for season one that's approximately down by about 40 percent maybe 38 percent and that's not looking good for a tv show believe it or not 40 percent is really really close to about half half of your viewership which means there's almost a million people watching this show at least in season one and that's a huge cut an audience now even though if i enjoy the show i kind of want to discuss why the show itself may have been suffering from you know like the audience drop or the ratings drop and like i hate repeating myself but for the most part it had to do with pacing um the second season they did make efforts to improve the pacing they put a little bit more action in there but at the end of the day this is still very much a superhero movie uh, not movie series but at the end at the end of the day you know it's it's just even besides that it's just overall it's just things seem to drag on a little bit too long they focus too much on the emotional aspects of the characters which i think is phenomenal to build up a character but there is a way to do it in such a way that it doesn't drag on and you don't feel like oh my god this arc is taking forever and mind you the season was only 10 episodes long so they focus a little bit too much on the characters they focus on the priest and they focus on mayhem they focus on tanny they focus on ty and they took up about two three episodes sometimes and it was was just it was just a little too much and then we didn't get enough explanation about characters like papa legba and we didn't get explanations about characters and their abilities more or less we know that yes tandy she can shoot light daggers yes we know that tyrone has you know access to the dark dimension but we didn't get enough explanation about their powers how they worked we got like very little of that in comparison to like their emotions you know how they affected the people around them and little things like that which in itself is nothing wrong with that but what makes this really frustrating is like I said it's a superhero series you want to see them fight a lot more often than not and you don't want to wait till like approximately the end of the season before you see like the height of all the action you know
know, and I say about every other episode, you should see some sort of fight sequence. It doesn't have to be super long, but it just has to be just enough to kind of keep you wanting more. And then you can kind of go back to the end of the season and then have this huge fight sequence and then it's worth it. Because let's say if you arrange this a lot like an Avengers movie or, you know, one of the MCU movies, for example, most of the movie does not entail fighting, you know, in a lot of situations. Um, I will give you the first Avengers movie. A lot of the movie was actually just taking the time to get those people together. Um, it wasn't so focused on, you know, just the fighting in itself. I think there was only maybe two, three major moments in the movie in which they were fighting. And the majority of the fighting that took place in one of those fights was closer to the end, which was obviously when the Jatari came to Earth after they opened the portal and blah, 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 blah. So for the most part, the most of the movie was just getting to know the characters, kind of feeling out their chemistry and wondering how they're going to work together because you have too many different personalities on a team and them respecting each other and then un them understanding that they bring different things to the table but they didn't really do that in cloak and dagger they focused so heavily on one thing and then kind of ignored the other until the last minute and then it was just like oh wait huh, these are superheroes uh they have to fight so let me just uh fight in the last two episodes or you know like i said they got a little better second season they did get a lot better with it but it just it still wasn't quite cutting it at least not for me and i think a lot of people felt the same way and that's one of the reasons why the ratings just got cut in half um the second uh, reason i believe a lot of people have I've been a little frustrated with the show overall is it's only 10 episodes and they're trying to still um, tell really elaborate stories in such a short amount of time now let me put it like this if you've ever read anything related to cloak and dagger any of their comics um, they had a few runs um but even in their own individual runs or any depending on when you picked up the comics even if you read the, one of their first comics when they had their own little uh, i believe it was a mini series it might have been an eight issue run but at the end of the day if you're reading any cloak and dagger story you know you have to realize that some stories were not super elaborate simply because they were under crunch time so if you only have 10 episodes why would you tell a story related to mayhem and then on top of that include Include someone like Despair. Despair is a villain who deserves an entire season by himself. Remember, the first three or four episodes was almost completely focused on mayhem and trying to figure out what's going on with Detective O'Reilly and you know her splitting in half and what her powers entailed. And then even then, they still didn't quite explain what she was capable of and her abilities. So that was a little of a letdown. The trailers and everything kind of was saying like, oh, mayhem is here. Mayhem and her abilities. She's going to be the one wrecking everybody. You know, she's going to be the focus of the season, but she was only the focus for about three or four seasons. So uh, it's three or four episodes. I don't know why I keep saying season reasons but ultimately that was one of the misdirections from the trailer that a lot of people probably were hoping to see and didn't quite get um despair I think the way that they did it was a great villain. Despair was in itself a great villain. He was a regular guy who just managed to get the abilities the same way that Tyrone and Tandy did. And he got the abilities to absorb the negative emotions from people and it fed him and it allowed him to kind of feel better for a short amount of time because on a regular day, he felt pain just from not having Despair to feed off of. I like that concept. I like the adaptation of his character. I even like the representation of people's emotions in the form of records and him wearing gloves when it was very delicate I, I like all of that but once again he is somebody that needs to be focused on for an entire season you can't focus on him for the second half of the season or the first half or just for a few episodes he is somebody who needs to be an entire focus his powers even though in the series it was not extremely vast or powerful but he was somebody who fed off of despair and he had to be a master manipulator in order for him to do what he did and then we still don't really know too much about the whole rocks on situation they dived a little bit into it in season one but we didn't really get the nitty-gritty of how corrupt Roxxon is and it still pretty much is up in the air and then as of right now we're still not even sure if we want to get a season three they might simply because it's a marvel tv show and then freeform is owned by disney and disney obviously has that money to kind of bankroll at least one more season but if they don't kind of get their act together i don't really see the show lasting a lot longer than season three but i think these are just two of the main reasons why the show is kind of dropping off in ratings pacing issues 
and just simply a lot of things that they wanted to you know kind of go over in the series was a lot larger than the amount of episodes that they had so pacing and then the storytelling in itself just not having enough time in the episodes but let me know what you think in the comments down below how did you feel about season two let me know if you think they're going to be season three are you excited that they're going to cross over with the uh, runaways or the possibility of them crossing over let me know in the comments down below and i hope to see you later on peace out Try and make y'all comfortable. That's right. For the record, you ain't trying to grow in the stomach.